Battle of the Herrings, also called the Battle of Rouvray, was a military action near the town of Rouvray in France, just north of Orléans, which took place on the 12th of February 1429, during the Siege of Orléans, during the Hundred Years' War. The immediate cause of the battle was an attempt by French and Scottish forces, led by Charles of Bourbon and Sir John Stuart of Darnley, to intercept a supply convoy headed for the English army at Orléans. The English had been laying siege to the city since the previous October. This supply convoy was escorted by an English force under Sir John Faustoff and had been outfitted in Paris whence it had departed some time earlier. According to Régine Pernot, the supply train consisted of some 300 carts and wagons carrying crossbow shafts, cannons and cannibals, but also barrels of herring. The latter were being sent since the meatless Lenten days were approaching. It was the presence of this stock of fish which would give the somewhat unusual name to the battle. The field of battle was an almost featureless flat plain. The French army, numbering between 3,000 and 4,000, confronted the much smaller English force who had been set up a defensive position by drawing up the supply wagons into a makeshift fortification. The entire defensive formation was then further protected by the placement of sharpened spikes all around to prevent the French cavalry from charging, a tactic which had been employed with great success at the Battle of Agincourt. The French attack began with the bombardment using gunpowder artillery, a relatively new weapon for the time and one whose proper usage was not well understood, although it was damaging to the wagons and caused English casualties. The 400 strong Scottish infantry Contrary to the orders of the Count of Clermont, who had sent message after message forbidding any attack, went on the attack against the English formation. This, according to De Vries, forced the premature cessation of the artillery bombardment out of fear of striking their own forces. The Scots were not well protected by armour, and great damage was visited upon them by the English archers and crossbowmen who were shooting from behind the protection of their wagon fort. French cavalry went in support of the Scottish infantry, but was stopped by the archers and stakes. At this point, the English, seeing that the remaining French infantry forces were slow to join the Scots in the attack, Pernod quotes the Journal de Siege d'Orléans to the effect that the remaining French forces come on in a cowardly fashion and did not join up with the constable and the other foot soldiers. They decided themselves to go on a counter-attack. They struck the rear and flanks of the disorganised French and Scottish forces and put them to flight. The convoy reformed and continued to supply the besieging English soldiers. The morale effect on the battle affected both sides. While it is generally felt today that the Battle of Herrings was lost by the French because of the failure to continue the artillery bombardment to its full effect, such was not the view at the time, at least in the besieged city of Orleans, within the city walls. Claremont was generally blamed for the disaster, being considered a coward and held in disdain. Soon thereafter, Claremont, together with the wounded Count Dunois, left Orleans together with about 2,000 soldiers. Morale within the city and among its leaders was at a low point. So much so that consideration was given to surrendering the city. The Battle of the Herrings was the most significant military action during the Siege of Orleans from its inception in October 1428 until the appearance on the scene in May of the following year of Joan of Arc. Even so, it was to all appearances a rather minor engagement and were it not for the context in which it occurred, would most likely have been relegated to the merest footnotes in military history or even forgotten altogether. But not only was it part of one of the most famous siege actions in history, the story also gained currency that it played a pivotal role in convincing Robert de Baudricourt in Vacoleur to accede to Joan's demand for support and safe conduct to Chinon. When, several days later, news of the military setback near Rouvray did in fact reach Vacoleur, de Baudricourt according to the story, relented and agreed to sponsor her journey to the Dauphin and Chinon. Joan finally left Vacoleur for Chinon on the 23rd of February, 1429.